Yeah. Welcome everybody. It's I, Sarah Seidelman, and this is one of the Hummingbird Series interviews. And I have my dear friend, Jill Farmer, who is also a coaching colleague, who's here to talk about, we're going to talk about personal style. Um, and Jill, just a brief intro, is an Emmy Award-winning journalist. She was a, an anchor and a big city uh, TV network, TV, what do I say, that TV reporter, <laughs> reporter, and eventually left that job to pursue life coaching and has been teaching about time management and stress reduction all over the country at different companies and doing individual coaching. And she's an amazing human. Welcome, Jill. Oh my gosh, you are so much fun for me to see on my calendar. Anytime I know I get to play with Sarah a little bit, it just brings me great joy. So thanks for the introduction, but mostly thanks for this opportunity to to play and to talk about something that I think lights both of us up. And I don't really know it lit me up as much until you invited me, um, all of us, to participate in your program a couple of years ago. And it really has been the impetus for uh, more joy to come into my life, to play around with what I'm throwing on my God pod every day to just show up in the world and play. I love that. Yeah. So one of the reasons I wanted to have Jill on is because last year we were in the authentic fashion, well, actually the last two years, authentic mm -hmm. fashion February, where we're all just taking a selfie every day of an outfit we put together and we're trying to explore what feels best. Like how do we find our authentic style? And Jill just like took this and ran with it and really developed her own, her own unique style. And it was so inspiring and so fun. And so, and then she's been making some fun TikToks and anyway, so I just wanted to talk about it. Yeah. What, tell me about your journey with style and like, um, just, you know, yeah. What happened to you when you got into this program? Like what happened before that? I mean, all of it, any of it. Well, I always liked clothes, but there was this kind of, I don't, I didn't know they were there, but I had these patterns, these rules in my head, like, okay, I dress up for work stuff, or if I'm going out or there's an event and then the rest of the time I'm comfortable, but then I kind of need to hide out because I'm not sure anybody else should see me in these, or I don't feel great. So it's like an almost an invisibility cloak of my uniform of like sweatpants and sweatshirt when I want to go out and, and be comfortable. And so I had this association of like, what you know there's there's looking great and then there's feeling comfortable and those two things didn't really intersect and so much of what i wore for work was so dictate what what i wore when I was trying to look good was dictated by these rules of what work told me I had to do years ago, even though now I've been, you know, somebody who worked for myself for a long time, but those old bosses in my head were still sort of playing into the choices that I was making. And so both years, the first year of authentic, um, of the, of the experience with you in February was so great because we were coming off of COVID and all of us had kind of gotten used to wearing really comfortable clothes, which was joyful. All of a sudden it's like, do we want to go back to Spanx and things that cut off our breathing, especially I am 54. So I'm of a certain age of like these clothes that don't necessarily feel good on my body. But the other side of it is, do I want to look like a man with pajamas all the time either? And so I really felt the joy of the experiment of trying to blend comfort and style and just expression. And it dawned on me for the first time that for me, um, you know, I'm not somebody who does, uh, creates a lot of art in my mind. You know, I, I'm appreciator of art, but I haven't identified as a creator of art necessarily, but I realized, oh no, this is my palette. Playing with clothes is really joyful for me. It's a really good creative outlet. And so that, that, again, that was like, there was a seed that was there, but the experience of coming together with you and with the other folks who joined in that first group. And then the second year again, helped that germinate. Absolutely. And I really, I want to circle back to your point about comfort and feeling good and feeling stylish or feeling like yourself and feeling great. Like if somebody knocked on the door, you'd be happy to answer the door because <laughs> I feel that feeling. I think that's like, when I've gotten to a certain age, I just, I don't, I'm not willing to put myself through any kind of massive discomfort. Although I did wear some high heels during the holidays at a couple of parties. And I mean, but I took them off when I danced on the dance floor and a few people kind of were like, wow, you're barefoot in this fine, whatever establishment. I'm just like, yes, I am. I just can't do it to myself. But anyway, um, I think that's, that's been a really a key thing for a lot of us. It's just finding something like breaking those rules, whatever those rules were that made you uncomfortable. 
Um, tell me about your palette. Like, what did you discover are some of the things, I think one of the things that for a lot of us, we discovered like, wow, I've bought for me is like, I keep buying Jackie O cardigans and yet I really don't like my, they're not flattering. I mean, I don't really like it. I mean, maybe in a layering situation, but how about you? Like, what did you find didn't work for you? What did you really like embrace of your palette? Yeah, I think that was there, there, there was, there's this part of me that really likes kind of a classic Ralph Lauren style, clean white shirt, you know, navy blazer. And so, but it's, it's mixed or juxtaposed with a little bit of rock and roll and a little bit of bling. And I had these columns of I'm either this or that. And so that, so starting to play with what does it look like if I throw on a, you know, a plain white tank top with t-shirt with this, you know, very obviously blingy um, car, uh, cardigan that I picked up. And, and do I just only wear this to a New Year's Eve party once a year? Or do I show up at the grocery store in this and feel great? <laughs> and, and so that was part of the, of the expression for me is that it's not necessarily just one style, but it's pieces and essences of these styles. And for me, part of the fun is blending them and playing with it. And sometimes making something that's a little bit maybe stuffy or preppy, a little bit more rock and roll. And, and so, but, you know, for other people, it was more like, I, I know their experience was like, they were all over the place. They just bought stuff that was on sale or that somebody else said would look good on them. And so for them narrowing the lane and saying, if it looks like, you know, maybe if it looks like something Jackie O would have worn, that's my lane. And I'm just going to stay in that. For me, it was a little bit of a more of a, a sampling and weaving and, you know, braiding things together experience. But yeah. How about you? I love that. Well, some of us came up with style moniker names after we kind of got clear on, and one of mine was P Diddy Prep <laughs> because like exactly. I kind of like classic stuff, but then I like to like bling it out. Like today, I got my little you know some fun pins on, or I just like some sparkle or something to make it yeah. Because if it feels too preppy, it feels very static and dead, like something from the past or something. So there's got to be something that li livens it up. Um, I remember loving you in particular had some amazing shoes that were just so fun and like unexpected and modern and different. And um, I was just, let's, I was, Jill has some photos she's going to yeah, share. Yeah, let's today. play. I, I, I will play a little bit. Yeah. And I, I think for she, me again, I've always loved shoes, but it was sort of, I recognize I really wasn't wearing a lot of them. I, I put away the big spiky high heels that with the big differential that doesn't feel good, but platforms work great for me. I still like the, and, and I wasn't wearing them, you know, just out and about or with my jeans. And so that was one of the things that was really fun too. So I'm going to share a little bit um, here. Let me, let me just uh, put up a, a, a kind of a fun little page that I put together and it's, I'm going to show you like what my kind of normal outfit would have been um, when we were just out and about playing. And that is just my sweatshirt and, you know, the sweatshirt and joggers, sweatpants and, yeah. and tennis shoes. There is nothing wrong with that outfit. That no. is just a fine human being that's there. But what I realized <laughs> is in one minute, I could make a very little change, right? Throw mm -hmm. on an equally comfortable sweater, um, in this case, I, you know, my shoulders are getting a little slopey as I get older. I might throw on, if it's really cold out, a t-shirt that has some shoulder pads underneath it, just to give me a little more structure. Oh, and these really comfortable boots that I've had for years, uh, 10 years now, but I don't throw them on very often. So there really was no more effort, right? It's everybody yeah. talks about wanting to make things effortless, but putting just a little more intention and easy intention is... I'm just as comfortable, but there's something about this that feels a little more like me when yeah. I go out in the world. So darling. And, and let's talk a little bit about how that impacts your mood. One of the things we did is like kind of reflect on how did I feel when I went around the grocery store, when I went and ran my errand, whatever you were doing out in the world. And it's like, I'm guessing when you're wearing that outfit, yeah, you just, you're small. I noticed when I wore an outfit that I liked, I was much more willing to smile at somebody. If I saw somebody I hadn't seen in 10 years, I didn't, which sometimes if I feel schlumpy, I will just like cower and like turn down another aisle at the grocery store because I don't feel up to saying hi to somebody. But when I dress, when I'm dressing in a way that feels good, I feel so, I feel confident, more confident and more open-hearted. 
A hundred percent. Like that's an, this is another example of just throwing on a, I just threw on a white shirt, tied it at the bottom with those same sweatpants and then threw on just a little necklace that I like for some color. And that Jill is the same person on the inside as, you know, sweatshirt Jill. And yet there's something about that that just makes me feel a little more energized for me there's a there's an internal external component to my energy it makes me just feel um a little bit more authentic to who i am and it, it's strange to say right i it, it's that it, that connection but it is it's true it's a little bit like what people I think have these associations with, well, I don't want to be vain or people who care a lot about fashion are, are just shallow. And I, I disagree. Just like my living space in my house is a reflection of me. And I could live in a house with no art up on the walls and no, and the furniture that was just purely utilitarian and that had no expression. But for me, letting myself play with those things lights an internal fire that helps fuel other things that are happening in my life in a really meaningful way that I just don't think I recognized um, until the last few years. There's so many things I want to say about that one, like dressing and doing any creative self-expression is one thing I've learned really helps with addiction for me. So like one of my core addictions, I mean, I sort of have this addictive personality, but one of my core addictions is overeating. So it's like, if I want to not overeat, one of the things I'll do is, well, I'll make art, but I'll intentionally dress and say, Sarah, like, let's put it on an outfit that feels good because there's some, again, it just gives you that dopamine hit that my, I think my addictive brain is looking for the dopamine hit. Mm -hmm. um, there's all this stuff about dopamine dressing now, which I think is really interesting. Um, there was something else I wanted to say too, about what you're saying that I forgot I lost the thread, but um, I think it, it really, it helped. It's such a holistic thing. Oh, I know this is what I was thinking of this idea that these things are superficial that, you know, picking out a jacket or spending hours thrift shopping, um, maybe as a superficial pursuit. And I remember years ago, um, I was thinking about like hair dyeing and getting your nails and all these things and, and being a really spiritual person. I was like, is this what we're meant to be doing? You know, and in a lot of spiritual traditions, right? We go into asceticism and like, you know, we turn away from these things and we, you know, we furnish our home with just a simple bed and a bowl and whatever. And I was like, I finally went on a journey to my spirit animal, Alice. And I was just like, Alice, like, what's the deal with all this hair dyeing and the nail? At the time it was about the hair dyeing and the nails and all that stuff. And is that okay? And then she, what she showed me was this beautiful Japanese garden. And she's like, this was like beautiful earth. There's nothing wrong with it, but these humans came in and they made this amazing garden that brings so much joy to so many people. And that's a way really of messing with nature, right? Or messing with simplicity. We might say, just why don't, why did you just leave it alone? Um, and that gave me such a cool perspective. It's like, oh, it's okay. It's okay. Whatever you want to do. Like if you want to be simple and never care about what you're wearing, like some people really get off on like, Hey, I wore a jumpsuit every day. So I can just focus on my, like Vera Wang, like she wears just black turtleneck, black jeans, like day in, day out. Cause she's like, I'm all about like streaming all my, you know, creativity towards the dresses that I want to make. Mm -hmm. Um, so anyways, so many, so many cool things that you mentioned. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, that's part of the thing too. It's like there, for some people, this exploration that can lead them to a uniform, so to speak, that yeah. is comfortable and, and it's not an either, or either I wear something that's, you know, comfortable in the same thing and there's no variety to it. Um, or I express myself in my, in the way that I'm wearing, it's like, can you play with it? Like this, I'll share one more. This is a really, yeah. um, this is kind of a, a uniform for me when I'm out and about is just these, again, another pair of kind of stretchy joggers and mm -hmm a and a graphic tee and then just this leather moto jacket and it's just it's playing with it this is a work uniform i i never would have worn um to a business event i never would have worn bling or sparkles in the past but there's really nothing crazy about that right it took this very kind of conservative um uh, uh black pantsuit 
and said, how do I make it more fun and more like me? And then I might play a little bit with, you know, doing stuff like I turn the shirt around backwards and I put on a different pair of shoes. That's the other side of it is like, I realized there was so much room for play Mm -hmm. and to take stuff that was sitting in my closet and it, you know, it just didn't feel good to me to have this stuff that I'd accumulated sitting there as an artifact and to be able to get creative and think, how can I put stuff together? You know, it's like, I might wear, this is kind of a more, even though this is very blingy, this is a look that I, especially right now, there's a lot of people are wearing sequins these days, but it doesn't seem too overwhelming, but it's like, can I play in that iris at full space of like, all of a sudden I put on even blingy ear earrings or I, I, you know, I play with like, how does that change the color? So it doesn't look t-shirty and I put this on and, and and it's like, sometimes it's like, I'm going to today, you gave us one of the prompts in our, in the group last February is like, what does it look like to put on one more thing? Like to do yeah. one more, you know, and even oh, wow. Though Coco, we talk about wow. Is- <laughs> yeah. Coco Chanel, you know, has said dress for the day and then take off one accessory. And that's how that's you know. Right. And if that's your really classic, sleek, minimalist way of doing things, great, but also to play with what if I break a rule and mix a pattern together? What if I put gold and silver together? What if I wear navy and black together? What if I, you know, wear my favorite white jeans that only got worn three months of the year all year long and and make it look, you know, seasonably appropriate appropriate in the upper Midwest (laughs) in in the cold months. And it's just, it's just been super fun and invigorating and joyful and Um, just a a meaningful challenge for me to play with in that space. Yeah. And I think um, like you were talking about, like flipping the shirt around, how cool is that? Like you get two wears out of this one outfit. And I think this is the thing that stylists, people who work all day with clothes, they learn all this stuff because they do it 24 seven. But most of us, we're not focused on clothes. We want to look better, but really what we have to do is it's just like learning how to play the guitar. You kind of have to practice it and it's hard. You're like, oh my God, we're going to get dressed again and take a selfie again every day. But it's like, then you're building this skill. And I ended up watching so many videos. And one of my favorite tricks from one of the videos I watched on, I think it was a J crew styling video. It was like, all they did was take an oversized Oxford shirt. And then the woman, um, she tucked in once, instead of buttoning it, she tucked in one side and then she wrapped the other and tucked it and I was just like my mind is blown like (laughs) it is so cool and I love that look because it kind of gives it like a waist but it's like taking something masculine and making it sculptural and so many people if you go on YouTube you guys search up like fashion tips and you'll find so many cool tricks that are fun and and again like playful like you said all of a sudden you're just playing in your sandbox with all these things yeah, for sure. And I think you had recommended that somebody you had seen that, that was on the what not to wear British version, Trini Woodall. And she became such a fun icon for me because she's so playful. She has a lot of information about, you know, dressing, but also she's evolved so much. And it's like, no, any body shape can really wear whatever the hell you want, which is awesome. And and where again, just throwing out rules and talking about the inviting you to play with what you have or to be a little strategic about what you bring in. Cause that was the other thing I realized. And that was partly through um, the great book from Inger Kenobi um, about fashion. Oh, I love it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, it was just so good about this idea of like, what's, what are we bringing in to our closets and into our life? And what is it doing for us? And is it, is it, a lot of times as women, particularly, I think we have these imprints about we look fat in that, or, you know, this is, it's only appropriate if you wear this in this setting. And so a lot of our buying decisions get made by these imprints or these emotional reactions that we have that are behavior patterns that we've really never paid attention to. So getting more intentional about it. One of the other people in the group wrote beautifully, she's a college professor, and she wrote about this idea that she realized she'd always really wanted um, this, she thought that certain people, it was just effortless, right? And that she was doing something wrong. And she said, no, it's maybe effortless because it's bringing them joy, but there's still an intentionality with putting the things together. And so you don't have to work really hard at it or look like you're trying really hard. But when you put some intentionality with how, you know, the palette of your body is, you're expressing that with whatever you're creating um, by putting on your clothes every day, 
there's something that's really rich and meaningful about that. Absolutely. And you, uh, we always tell people like, don't, don't declutter your closet. Like don't get rid of anything. Cause you may want to toss something, but you might find the perfect way to use it in this, when you start experimenting. Um, and the other thing is like, yeah, in Inger's book, which is called, how do I look Inger Kenobi? I'll link it in the comments. Um, she also just highlights all, you know, the ethical stuff. I think none of us want to buy stuff that's made by sweatshop labor. None of us want to be buying stuff that we're going to toss away in six months because the quality is so crummy. Um, I really re-embraced thrift shopping and that became something so fun to do with my kids. And um, now that I have more time, like 20 years, 10 years ago, I didn't have the time. Uh, which is another topic we could discuss that <laughs> you're so good at time management because Jill's written a wonderful book on time management, which we will also link in the in the comments because now I do have some more time and it's so fun to to do that and realize I've realized that um yeah, to buy something um that's been used, it's like you can change out your palette. It's okay. Like I can buy this blazer and in five years, if I get tired of it, I can maybe tuck it in the back of my closet or I can trade it in and find something new and somebody else can enjoy it you know? Yeah. I loved that too. And just, you know, they, and for me, thrifting can feel kind of overwhelming, but the idea of thrifting and the, and the, the spark that you guys had the, where that sort of lit a flame for me was what if I play in my closet, like I'm thrifting yeah. and looking through and thinking about this is brand new to me. And if it was, and if I'd never seen it before, how might I wear it differently with the things that I have? And, and so here, I'll give you one more example. Um, oh yes. Of and while you're doing that, I was just going to share, um, there's a woman, um, Ms. Bell Tempo, you can follow her on Instagram and she does this thing, shop your closet. It's an she'll put up an outfit that's from Instagram from somebody interesting and she does all body types it is not limited to just like stick thin people at all and then she'll be like everybody try to go find what you can to recreate this outfit and it is amazing like I was blown away by some of the outfits that I made and that I think it was like a two-hour class that we took it was so fun so anyway yeah, yeah and I, I follow somebody else on TikTok I'm forgetting their name now that does something similar but they take Pinterest boards or like things from fashion magazines and like, here, try to recreate this look. And it's fun to me. I was like, oh, that does look great. It's not nearly the exact pieces. So this is just an example of like, I loved these kind of off-white jeans that I got last year. And I, but I was, I had realized I'd kind of tucked them away in September and, and it's kind of cold here, but I thought I like that idea of single column, single color column dressing with a, a longer jacket or a longer sweater. Again, I wore the t-shirt I have underneath. It has a little bit of shoulder pads, gives me some structure up there. And then I threw on these really kind of funky, almost 70s style platform boots that I love I with love the white, which kind of the white jeans sort of show them off in a way that if I was wearing, you know, Navy jeans, it wouldn't have. And it was so fun. I was like, oh, I just felt so like free and rebellious to be wearing white jeans in January. But there was just something about playing with that that was just really joyful. Yeah. And as we were saying, like when you feel so good like that, it, it opens your heart. You become, it's it's like your ca capacity to do, become the kind of person that you want to and, and behave in that way that you want to be behaving you know, somehow it, it, it allows that, which again, is more proof to the idea that it, this isn't superficial. And I think that's why, like, as you said, it's really about intentionality. Like, what is it? How do I want to feel? And, you know, what could I do today just to switch one thing up? So I feel a little better. Um, yeah. yeah. And that was one of the things that came through to me in my experience, but particularly from other participants who would just be very authentic and vulnerable and say, I really don't feel like taking this selfie today, or I really don't feel, you know, I just feel uh, kind of schlumpy or whatever. And just playing with the idea of did, did the experiment of, oh, when I just knew I was going to be taking the selfie, did I put something on that made me feel a little more, uh, a little less schlumpy, a little less, uh, and noticing that sometimes not always, obviously it's not a miracle, just change your clothes and your mood immediately gets amazing. And it's all rainbows <laughs> and uniforms, but there was at least a, a tiny bit of a dial that would get turned for a lot of folks when they recognize that just taking a little more time, it was a, it was an act of self-love to think yeah. about what really may, felt on the inside and outside, making those things, um, helping the dress in a way that helped them feel better could help turn the dial a little bit. And that was, 
that was a, a really powerful insight for me as well. Yeah. And I was amazed at sometimes, you know, you look in the mirror, you're like, I'm good. Let's go out the door. But when you take a photo and you look at the photo, often you catch things that you're like, oh yeah, this, there needs to be contrast or, or this doesn't exactly, you know, then often I would tweak it again. And that, so that was a real learning process. I do have one day. I remember I really went for it. I went for like five. Wows. I was just like, I'm just going to push it up to see how, and I think I had like a belt of crazy neck. I had a lot going on. And I went up to this, my friend and I went thrifting that day. And I remember going to the dressing room and suddenly I saw myself in the mirror and I was kind of shocked. And I had this like attack of shame, like, Oh my God, what are you doing there? Are you <laughs> clownish? But then it was like, I was able to let that go, but you know, the powerful feelings that we can have as a result of how we look and our concern for what other people might think of us, it's just, it's so, I don't know. I, we've been steeped in that and, or at least I have. And mm -hmm. so I think it's just an amazing exercise to see where you're at with yourself too. Even if the clothes, I don't know, there's something about it. <laughs> Yeah, it was, I, I agree with that hundred percent. And, and that's part of the other thing too, is it just, the, the stakes were low. Okay. So one day I'm like, meh, you know, and I committed to trying to wear some things that I hadn't worn for a long time. And sometimes at the end of the day, in the experiment, it was like, this isn't particularly comfortable. I tried 20 different ways to get one way that I was like, okay. And so maybe it is time to free that up and to put it in the donation pile and let somebody else who it, it would bring more, um, you know, joy to have that experience. And so that, that part of it, I liked too, because there was just this, no, I really have given it the college try. <laughs> yeah, I've really yeah, given yeah, this, yeah. this thing. And now it's time to release this piece from my uh, wardrobe and let it go somewhere else. Yeah. And I know other people that I've talked to said, you know, it really changed how they looked at their clothes, how they shop now. They're much more clear on what they're interested in buying or not interested. Like I don't buy much anymore. I'm like, nope, I tried that new. You know, it's like, I've gone through after doing like three cycles of this, I think is it three, I think so. Um, yeah, you just get really clear. So it can save you a lot of money and heartache. <laughs> Well, thank you, Jill, so much. Can you tell us, my, I, I just realized my battery's about to die. So I'm going to let you tell us where you can find us while I reach or put my battery in in case we run out of juice. You can go to jillfarmer.com and it will tell you about the work that I do in the world um, and the way that I love connecting with people um, professionally as well. And Sarah, thank you so much for doing Authentic Fashion February these past years. It was a real, again, it was just a real catalyst, a real gift that absolutely um, inspired opening up a part of my life that I'm just having so much fun playing with. If you would have told me three years ago that I would be making, you know, for fun, <laughs> on TikTok doing, you know, outfit of the day of videos and have a blast doing it. I would have said, really? I don't know how that fits in with my, you know, big picture or my brand or whatever. And this helped me sort of say, F it, like, this is fun. And I want to play in this space and have it integrate into the work that I put out in the world. So I'm grateful to you for that. Tell us a little bit too about what you're working on. Cause on TikTok, I know you've been sharing like a word of the day and just kind of some gentle, like more it's a, you guys should subscribe i'll put your link to your tiktok in this too i'm just really having fun with sort of using the medium of tiktok you know back in a previous life way back when you mentioned i had a life as a tv reporter and so there's this part of me that's like oh i like this medium for communicating and i like the fact that it needs to be sort of short and sweet and meaningful and so i just sort of let the inspiration hit me. Do I want to show people what I'm wearing that day? Do I want to talk about an idea, a coaching strategy, a tool? And I, and I just have been putting it there as a, as a, as a container for community to kind of come in and get what might be helpful out of it. So it's been really fun. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Jill. And I can't wait to see what you put on next. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks for being exactly you and everybody sign up for authentic fashion February as soon as you can. It's so good. <laughs> Thanks, Jill. Bye, okay. everybody. Bye.